Hello, and welcome to Magic and Pathfinder Part 9, Polymorph and Battle Forms. Before getting into Polymorph, we should first discuss the regular Morph trait. When a spell has the Morph trait, like Feet Defense, some part of the target changes shape into a new form, but not their entire body. In the case of this spell, only the target's feet take on a new shape. If a spell has the Morph trait and grants the target new attacks, like the fangs and claws provided by Moon Frenzy, those attacks also gain the magical trait. And it is possible to be the target of multiple morph spells, but if two or more modify the same body part, then the most recent spell tries to counteract the effects of the previous spell. See my video on counteracting to learn more about how that works. I'll leave a link to that video in the description. Polymorph spells work like regular morph spells, except they alter the target's entire body. Just like with morph spells, when a polymorph spell grants new attacks, those attacks gain the magical trait. One important limitation to be aware of is even though a polymorph spell may let you take another general form, they typically do not allow you to duplicate someone else's appearance. You can cast humanoid form to take on the appearance of another ancestry like Elf or Dwarf, but you cannot use those spells to look like a specific Elf or Dwarf, although using the spell may lessen the difficulty of disguise checks. Also, you can only be affected by one polymorph effect at a time, so if you're polymorphed and become the target of another spell with the polymorph trait, that second spell will attempt to counteract the first polymorph effect, just like we saw with spells that have the morph trait. If successful, the first polymorph ends and the new one takes its place. One specific type of polymorph spell we need to discuss is Battle Form. As the name suggests, Battle Forms are polymorph spells that are intended to be used in combat and as such have a few special rules associated with them. First of those is when you're using a Battle Form, you cannot cast spells, speak, or use manipulate actions that require the use of hands. Some battle forms, like elemental form, do grant you hands and the ability to take manipulate actions, and many normal elementals are capable of speech, but by raw, this does not allow you to speak when elemental form or cast any spells even if they only have a somatic component. However, just be aware a lot of GMs out there do roll differently, so make sure you check with yours. Let's take a look at another example, animal form. This is a polymorph spell that turns the caster into an animal battle form. When you cast this, you choose the type of animal you want to become from the provided list. Ape, bear, bull, canine, cat, deer, frog, shark, or snake. When you take on this new form, all of your gear is absorbed into you, and any constant ability that that gear grants continues to function, but you cannot activate any items while you are in your animal form. Also, the only bonuses you can benefit from while in a battle form are circumstance bonuses and status bonuses, but you still suffer the effects of any type of penalty. And when you take on a battle form, many of your stats and abilities will be replaced by the stats and abilities listed with the battle form. For example, when you cast animal form, your armor class becomes 16 plus your level, and it specifically notes that armor checks and speed reductions from wearing armor are excluded from the general rule that says all penalties from equipment still apply. You gain 5 temporary hit points, low light vision, and scent as an imprecise sense. That all feels pretty straightforward so far, but here is where people often become confused. First, you gain a set of melee attacks that are based on the animal form you chose. The wording can be a little tricky, but your attack modifier with these attacks is either your normal unarmed attack modifier or an attack modifier of plus 9, whichever is higher. It's going to be the better of those two. So, if you have a plus 11 unarmed attack bonus when you're not in an animal form, then you're going to have a plus 11 attack bonus when you are in your animal form. And if your normal unarmed attack bonus is less than 9, then it gets bumped up to 9 when you're in an animal form. 
and this does cause some discussion and debate regarding how hand wraps of Mighty Blows interact with these rules. Hand wraps of Mighty Blows grant an item bonus to unarmed attacks, which would make the caster's normal unarmed attack bonus higher, but battle forms specifically exclude item bonuses when polymorphed. So the question is, if your regular unarmed attack bonus is higher because of hand wraps of Mighty Blows, do you use that bonus or not? I don't want to spend too much time on the debate here, but the bottom line is follow whichever way your GM decides. For what it's worth, I believe that the bonus would count in this case because there is a precedent with how a familiar's armor class is calculated. Familiars do not benefit from item bonuses themselves, but the official ruling is they do benefit from the item bonus of any armor their master is wearing. In the same light, I do not believe that the item bonus provided by hand wraps of Mighty Blows is modifying the animal form's attack bonus, but instead is modifying the caster's regular unarmed attack bonus, which can then replace the animal form's attack bonus if it is higher. Plus, it would just feel kind of odd if you suddenly became worse at unarmed attacks when in an animal form, but again, this is an area that sees a lot of debate, so follow your GM's guidance. Now let's talk about damage. Each form also grants at least one attack, and it says here that your damage bonus is plus one. For example, apes can punch with a base damage of 2d6 bludgeoning, and we add one to that per the spell, making it 2d6 plus one. This often leads players to scratch their heads and wonder why a gorilla would only have a plus one damage bonus and more than a few players go searching for an ape's strength score with the intent of adding it to the 2d6 plus 1. When polymorphed in a battle form, the battle form's traits replace yours. Essentially, you get what they give you and nothing more. So, when you're an ape, your damage is 2d6 plus 1, nothing more unless you heighten the spell, which we'll talk about in just a moment but any traits of your character that are not modified by the battle form remain the same. So, for example, your charisma, intelligence, dexterity, wisdom would all remain the same when in this animal form. And this conversation leads to the last bullet. It says your athletics skill bonus is plus 9, or whatever your regular athletics bonus is just like when calculating your attack bonus. It's going to be the higher of those two. And this is another place where players can become a little confused because it means your athletic skill in ape form is the same as when you're a frog or a snake or you take any other kind of animal form, which seems a little off, but remember, whatever animal you choose with this spell, you will be a medium-sized version of that animal so we're talking about really big frogs and really big snakes, and as a medium-sized ape, you're probably a little smaller than what a lot of people envision for a silverback gorilla. Also note that each animal form provides its own movement scores. These again replace whatever your normal speed scores are. You do not get to choose the better of the two. And last, we should look at how this spell is heightened. With each spell level through fifth, you are able to heighten your animal form and it becomes stronger. At third level, you gain more temporary hit points, your attack modifier becomes plus 14, your damage bonus becomes plus 5, and notice here that the damage bonus does not increase by 5, making it a total of plus 6, it simply becomes a plus 5, and your athletic skill increases as well. At fourth level, your battle form becomes size large, and you gain 10 feet of reach in addition to the same boost received at 3rd level. And when heightened to 5th level, your animal form becomes huge, has 15 feet of reach, and your damage dice are doubled. Before we close, I'd like to take a moment to thank all of my patrons. These videos would not be possible without their continued generosity and support. Members of the How Us Played Patreon community receive special benefits like exclusive content, and getting to vote on the topics I cover. Visit the link shown at the top of the screen and in the description if you'd like to know more. If you would like to support this channel and help it grow, the easiest way to do that is by subscribing and clicking the bell icon so you get notified when new videos release, and I can always be reached through Twitter and Facebook too. 
Thanks for watching, take care, and happy gaming.